Hey guys and welcome to another video about how to FPV. In this one we're going to be talking about rates, which is the most important thing I think to be able to understand in an early sense of getting into FPV because it's going to help you um, overall getting more familiar with the aircraft and more familiar with the controls. So before we get into that, let's go ahead and talk about the radio setup and just making sure that nothing is in the radio as far as configuration with an expo or with any kind of dead point or anything set up in the radio. So the radio we want to be um, fully linear. So when it goes full one way, that's full 100, 100%, 100%, 0%, and then in the middle is 50%. So there's nothing set up in the radio. We didn't put any mixes in. The only thing that we should ever be really using on the radio as far as a drone is concerned is you know throttle, yaw, roll, and pitch, and then maybe a switch for arming it or a switch for turtle mode or something to flip the quad back over. But as far as mixes, there's no mixes like you would in a full-scale aircraft because we're not dealing with a physical... Um, platform like you know an aileron or an elevator something on a fixed wing aircraft where you have an airfoil when you want to adjust how that rolls or how that reacts with the environment you have to control it in the radio um, because that's how you add what's called expo to deaden the center and make it a little bit more doughy in the middle so that it flies smoother um, because you know not everybody is super precise and can fly without expo so as far as the radio is concerned we just need to make sure that we're set up neutrally um, and how I'm going to do this is I'm actually going to tune a quad's rates from scratch in Velocidrone and I'm going to talk about a little bit on quad setup and a little bit on PIDs because all of those things correlate with each other so the quad weight the quad prop the quad motor the power what ESC you're running or really what um, battery running how many volts it has and then the fact of the fact that PIDs and rates they literally all correlate with each other but if we talk about quad setup and you got the quad set up well and you think it's ready to start tuning or you just want to try it out of the box and see how it reacts and kind of figure it out for yourself I can give you a lot of good information to set your foundation of how these things work so that when you go to do that you have a better understanding of what you're actually adjusting so let's go ahead and go into Velocidrone and uh, I'm going to go, uh, I just have my com controller hooked up, like nothing special. I've literally hooked it up via USB-C like we did in a previous video. And uh, I'm gonna go and make sure that the controller is here. I'm gonna assign a controller. I'm gonna move a stick and I'm gonna see that it shows up and we're you know all set up. So you see how it's moving linearly? As I move the stick over, you see the thing moving linearly? That's, we just wanna make sure that that's what it is. You, you're not gonna, you go into the radio, if you set it up for a plane, it might automatically add expo or something in. So you just wanna make sure that that's not in there. So uh, anyways, we can back out of there and we'll go into single, pl single player mode. And I wanna show you guys some stuff before we go any further. So in this game, it shows you a lot of different quads. You can go up here in the corner and you can add all different kinds of quads. So as, you, as I click through here, you can see there are many variations of how quads are designed and what, um, what they may look like. So a lot of this stuff is aesthetic, but you can obviously see the difference between these two quads. Not only is the prop different, this is more of a six inch style prop, and this is literally a six inch uh, diameter from the center of here to out, or sorry, a center a six inch yeah diameter rather than a radius so six inch diameter where something like this is probably more of a five inch prop um, and then this may even be a weird kind of four and a half or five inch prop so you can see the geometry how the motors are set up um, this is more of an X frame, or this is more of a wider H frame, they would probably call that. Um, this is kind of a, a very symmetrical X, like a, and then obviously the same wider thing, and then this is more of a front to back H. That's a full on X quad. And yeah, in general, X quads are like symmetrical X's, something like this with a bottom mounted battery is gonna be more suited for racing because when you crash and you tumble, it's usually a better odds that you're gonna land upright if you have the battery on bottom. Now there is such thing as called turtle mode these days where you can flip the motors in reverse and get out of a situation where you are upside down, but it's always nice to just land right side up and be able to take back off um, immediately. When you have the battery on bottom, it does make that a lot more frequent. So. We see all these quads, they're all different styles. There's all different kinds of stuff set up on them. 
this is going to make a big difference on how the quad flies. So a bottom mount battery is going to fly a little bit different than a top mount battery. Um, if we have a bottom mount battery, it might you know hinder us from coming in and sliding on the ground because we're going to tear up our battery. Um, things like this is going to kind of stop you from, if you're flipped upside down, it's not going to put you completely upside down and have a little bit of room to flip back over. Um, and then obviously the size of the drone and how the propeller is put, like where it's located, is going to affect the quad. Like a quad like this, that's a little more X shaped a little more symmetrical is going to have better yaw authority and the pitch and roll axes are going to be very similar feeling where when you get to something that's a little more H designed like this roll is going to spin faster than pitch because it has to travel less area so the larger the quad is, the, le the slower it's going to spin because it has bigger props to spin up and it also has more area to travel. The smaller it is, it's usually smaller the props it has and the faster it's gonna spin. So when you're talking about rate, um, which is what we're gonna be talking about today, this, this number, this arbitrary rate number that we're gonna talk about, the degrees per second, is really comes down to the quad physical setup. It doesn't always correlate directly to an actual degrees per second. It's just a theoretical number. So when you go in there and you say you have a three inch quad and then you have an eight inch quad and you put the same number in there, they're gonna spin at different speeds just because it's physically traveling over a larger distance with the bigger quad versus a smaller distance with a smaller quad. Um, and the same thing goes with Expo um, and RC rate and Super rate, which we're going to talk about pretty extensively here in a little bit. And those are the things that you will need to know to be able to adjust this thing to fly the way that you want it to fly. And you may not know how you want it to fly, but eventually you'll understand that this works for me and I may need to adjust this thing to get a desired result that will help me fly smoother and be more consistent. And I'll talk about what all of that entails very shortly. So we've gone over a bunch of different types of quads and what you know might be suited for one thing or what might be suited for another um, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the little bastard which is like my favorite quad on here and we're gonna tune it uh, as far as the rates are concerned we'll talk about PIDs in another video because those do have a lot to do with how the quad flies but it's really hard to kind of show that in a game because it's not as drastic and it doesn't show up as much as it would in real life so you can't really see all of the problems I can just tell you about them but that doesn't do you any good because you want to be able to see what I'm talking about so today we're gonna to talk about rates only okay so we've got the little bastard I'm gonna select this model we're just gonna put a whatever so this is a stock little bastard straight out of the game um, and then I go into here and I've actually downloaded a few maps from this guy named Chris Riley so I just went to his YouTube and downloaded a couple maps he's got some really cool stuff on there his YouTube channel is Chris Riley music at drone videos go check him out he's got some really cool Velocid drone maps and this particular video shows you exactly how to download them so anyways we've downloaded some maps I've got one uh, of his that is called skyscraper what is it skyscraper race course um, yeah we don't actually you know what I want to do this one because it's it's very interesting this road track okay so a racetrack wow I can read so we're going to open up racetrack um, and as this is loading really like rates are something you're going to want to go in this kind of order okay you want to get your quad set up you're making sure that the motors are spinning the right way the props are on the right direction and the balance of the aircraft is very neutral aka all of the weight is as close to the center of the aircraft as you can get it if you have a counterweight such as a GoPro you need to shift the battery and usually the battery is the most heavy thing on there so you're going to use that as like a counterweight to balance it and how you would balance a quad is you're going to grab the top of the uh, quad basically right above the flight controller with your two fingers and you're going to pick it up if if it leans forward it's too forward heavy if it leans back it's too back heavy you kind of want to have a light grip on it but enough to be able to pick it up and that's kind of an easy way to tell whether or not your quad is balanced or not so you just pick it up right over the flight controller from the top plate and it'll lean one way or the other and then you can adjust the battery and every time you do this you'll understand after a while that hey I can put the battery here and it's going to be uh, neutral and you just end up putting the battery in the same place every time because you want it to be consistent if it's off center it's going to react and and make the quad fly a little bit differently and you're gonna be like why is it flying different um, and it will also affect the PIDs so as far as how they react with the quad because you want it to be as symmetrical as it can be <laughs> so I just got run over by a go-kart um, so what we're gonna do here 
is we're gonna go in and I'm gonna fly this as it came out of the box. So these stock rates and stock PIDs are most likely gonna work on your real aircraft. And obviously the developer in this game has set it up to where it's gonna fly pretty nicely right out of uh, his hands. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick it up and let me turn on the stick cam so you can see what I'm doing. And I got throttle over here. I'm gonna pick it up and I'm just gonna kind of fly around, okay? This is a big open area. This is usually where you wanna do this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna start moving back and forth on the stick, kind of seeing how it reacts, seeing, put a little bit of yaw in, see how it reacts. And obviously camera angle is going to have a lot to do with this as well. So we have a fixed camera angle that we can go in here and adjust. So, or sorry, not here, but in this setting. So we're gonna put, let's put the camera angle at zero for a second, just to see what it does. So the camera angle is now perfectly level and if I hover, the camera is perfectly level. If I wanna go forward and I pitch forward, I'm starting to look at the ground, okay? So if I wanna go fast and forward, I'm looking straight at the ground and I can't see anything out in front of me, right? Well, if you go to a really high camera angle, you're able to fly fast, but then when you come in and try to land, you can't see. So a good sweet spot for camera angle, and also you start flying backwards if you're not used to zero camera angle. A lot of pilots use zero camera angle. I personally think that you know anywhere between 10 and 30 degrees is, is probably where most people are gonna find it to be um, their sweet spot. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set it to 25 degrees. Um, and this is a physical adjustment that you would do on the quad. You would literally make the angle of the camera 25 degrees. So when the quad tilts forward, it puts your camera angle level and you can see in a straight line now. So I'm at 25 degrees, I'm flying forward and you see now I'm not touching the sticks and it's going forward and I'm not looking at the ground. So now that we've got the camera angle adjusted and we're flying around, we're kind of checking things out. Let's do a roll. And it feels kind of funky. I don't know, I may go to like 20, or I may go to 30 degrees because it feels a little weird for some reason. Let's do, let's just do 35. This is not how it would be in real life, but it just feels really weird. So, all right. Whoa, that's, that's, oh, I know what it is. It's got y'all coupled with it for some reason. Uh, oh, I adjusted the mix. That's what I don't want. I want a camera angle, 25 degrees. Jeez, that was freaking me out for a second. I was like, what is going on here? Okay, so what we're gonna do is pick it up in the sky and do a roll, okay? I'm gonna go to full stick. I'm gonna go full stick forward, okay? This may be a little bit advanced for someone that's new to this, but you can do it in the game and you can get a very good feeling of what I'm talking about. Put in y'all, full stick, okay? Go high to do this if you're doing it outside for the first time. When you do these things, you're gonna see how fast it spins. You're using the horizon as your leveling point. And just in general, I think it's a little sensitive around center stick and the rolling is a little bit too slow. So roll and pitch are the rates that we're gonna be dealing with and y'all I'll talk about here in a second. So we're gonna to go to this tab right here which is called advanced drone setup. And this screen you're gonna actually see in real life when you go to look at your, um, when you're real drone. You're gonna see something like this in a program either called beta flight or race flight or um, a kiss. There's all different kinds of platforms out there that are gonna have this exact thing right here, okay? So you have what's called PID, which stands for proportional, integral, and derivative. Those are gonna be numbers that we will adjust last. So we have our quad set up correctly and we're gonna adjust our rates right now. And then PIDs is like, usually they work really well out of the box and most people will say they've never touched them or they have and they don't notice a difference. Um, but that's a whole deep dive that we would have to go into to talk about PIDs, which I can do for you guys. And I think we'll have to do that once we end up building a drone or even tuning the quad that we have. Um, but rates are what, we talking, what we're talking about today. So what I'm gonna do is actually just cover up PIDs so it makes it a little less confusing because I know having all of these numbers over here it can be very confusing, okay? So don't worry about PIDs anymore. We're just gonna worry about rates. So when you look at rates and you look over here on the side, you see that there's a curve and this is for your roll, pitch, and yaw, okay? So this curve, this is our center point and this is our end point. So the farthest we can push the stick is gonna be down here and the very center point when we're not doing anything, that is here. And that only is for roll, pitch, and yaw. Our throttle is on a linear line, okay? There's not a curve. Now, why we want our throttle on a line is so that it's consistent every time. I'll talk about why Expo or why this exponential curve, which is what Expo stands for, is a good thing, but at the same time, it can be detrimental 
detrimental depending on how much accuracy you want. Because if you have too much of a curve, it's really nice in the middle, but as soon as you get towards the end, it becomes uncontrollable because you can't precisely hold it at this one place because it moves so fast at the end. So too much expo is a bad thing. Too little expo, you're gonna be really twitchy on the sticks. There's a fine line between too much and too little. So if we're talking about roll, pitch, and yaw, we wanna just go ahead and say that roll and pitch are pretty much always gonna be the same because the physical characteristics of the drone itself may adjust whether or not you change roll and pitch deviating from each other like number wise, but that's gonna give you like a physical rotation difference. So if you have the same numbers and you have a quad that's too long or just longer than it is wide, then it's gonna flip at a slower rate than it's gonna roll, but you can get used to that. That. but the numbers you can adjust that in the numbers but usually I just keep them exactly the same roll and pitch are always the same and y'all is a little bit slower than roll and pitch okay so that's just kind of a rule of thumb that I use you can adjust whatever you want I'm just telling you what I do okay so we're dealing with super rate RC rate and expo okay these two things right here RC rate and super rate adjust this X, or sorry, they adjust that and they adjust the amount of degrees per second, which is this number right here. So we have a rate, super rate, and RC rate, and they adjust, adjust how many degrees per second. Watch, I can adjust one up, I can adjust down. You see that it adjusts. I can actually get a very similar number if I adjust two different numbers, okay? So I adjusted that one. These should be, the, like roll and pitch should be the same, right? I got a very similar degree per second, but I've adjusted two different numbers. So there's no one way to do this. I'm just telling you the most controllable way, at least I've found, um, and I'll just talk about like, there's so many different ways to do this, but obviously I'm gonna show you one way and then you can deviate however you feel. I'm just trying to create a nice foundation that you can build off of, okay? So as a guideline, we're gonna start out with zero expo because super rate actually has expo built into it. So if we're talking about rate, this is a more linear thing. This is RC rate is more linear and super rate has a little bit of expo built into it. So you can kind of think of it as RC rate being a linear change and super rate being a little bit of an exponential change, okay? So I like to set super rate at about 0.64 as just like a general guideline, that's a good starting point, okay? 0.64, okay? Now we have, you can see that if our, uh, our C rate is all the same, we've actually slowed down the degrees per second from 666 to 555. I thought it was too slow. I'm gonna jump up probably to around 1,000 degrees per second. That has nothing to do with how fast a thousand sounds like a lot but it really depends on how big the quad is if you have a super small quad a thousand degrees per second is going to be crazy fast if you have a big quad it's going to be really slow so it's like an arbitrary number and just keep that in mind when you're adjusting these things so i thought it was too slow at 666 so i'm going to bump it up or at, yeah when it was at 666 so i'm going to bump it up to a thousand and what i'm going to do that with is rc rate so i'm going to bump up rc rate until i'm at a thousand degrees per second and when i'm at a thousand degrees per second we're gonna go test fly and see how it reacts. So 0.81 is where we need to be. And I'm gonna just adjust roll and pitch to be the same, but y'all felt fine, so I'm gonna leave y'all where it is, okay? So we're gonna go test this. I got 1.81, I'm at 1,000 degrees per second, and I got our, our super rate set at 0.64, and I have zero expo. So this is gonna be very twitchy around center stick because I have zero expo, and my super rate is low, and my RC rate is high. So let's go ahead and save this, and take off this little black box up here so that you guys can see. Um, all right, so we're gonna hover around. I got my stick cam on here. So it's super sensitive, all right? Very, very sensitive around center stick and the roll is a lot faster now. So I'm literally gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go up, I'm, I'm having trouble controlling it because it's super sensitive. I've taken out all the expo, but the rate as far as how fast it rolls and flips is very controllable. It's not too fast. For me at least, everyone's gonna have different uh, preferences. It seems very fast, but I'm just using, a, it's all timing based, okay? So for me, there's a certain time I need to hold the stick to get it to do a full rotation regardless of the axis. Now most people are gonna have different timing than I do, but 
ultimately, at the end of the day, you wanna make sure that your rolls and flips and all of your tricks are very timing based rather than visual based because if you base everything off of visuals when you start losing video because you are going to get staticky video, you're gonna have some issue where you go too far away and something starts breaking up and you lose video. If you're doing a roll or you're in an environment that's very disorienting, if you do it based off of timing rather than a visual cue, you're gonna have a lot more success of completing that, okay? So, or completing that trick. So with that being said, let's go back into this rate setup here. Uh, let me cover up the PIDs so you don't get confused. Um, okay, that, there we go. And uh, so now that we're in here, I think I'm gonna add a little bit of expo. Let's go up to 20%. And that's going to make it a little bit doughier. You see this curve over here kind of pulling a little farther to the right. It's actually making the expo curve more curvy rather than a straight line. Um, so yeah, I'm adding a little bit of expo here, 20%, same rate, I, I was happy with the speed. I think that the rate, you know, was it was great as far as how it felt, but I needed a little bit of expo to kind of uh, settle it down. It was a little too, a little too in my face, like too twitchy on the sticks. So I'm flying now. And you can adjust camera angle and stuff, like if you wanna go try to chase some kind of car, if it's going really fast, you wanna run more camera angle. If it's going really slow, you probably wanna run less. So I probably don't have enough camera angle to actually keep up with this car, it's going a little bit fast. So everything feels good now. The It's a little fast for me. I mean, it's, it's very usable, but I think it's a little fast. So you know, you go up and do a roll kind of move around center stick, see how it feels to you. If it feels okay, then you know maybe fly that for a minute and then find its problems and then adjust. So we'll go back in and we'll adjust one more thing. Uh, so let's put this back up. Um, what we're gonna adjust is I'm actually gonna decrease the rate slightly. Uh, I'm gonna pull it down here. I, like I said, uh, I you can do it another way, but oh, well, actually, you know what, let's do it this way. Let's pull this down to 999 and then increase this to 25. And once we do that, we probably should be good on rate. And then we, uh, you know, we can go have some fun because honestly, flying something that you can't control is not fun. All right, so anyways, that's how I would tune rates. This rates, these rates feel really good to me now. I can, you know, rip and do what I need to do. But like I said, everything is gonna be different. You can get so many different, um, different outcomes by having different numbers. So they're really, it comes down to whatever your personal preference is. Oh, and I didn't get through that hole. But yeah, kind of really, it's all personal preference. And if you know what to do and you know how to adjust and what to adjust, then you can find that. And that's kind of what I was trying to show you in this video was adjusting your rate is such a personalized thing that if you don't know how to do it, then it's gonna completely change how you interact with the aircraft because it's gonna be uncontrollable or it's not gonna do what you wanted to do and you're not gonna know how to adjust it. So I guess to sum this whole video up, Tuning your rates is very important and knowing what to do. You can obviously find someone that has a certain rate and a certain style that you think is gonna fit the style that you want, and then you can copy what they have. Like I give out my PIDs and rates all the time and people say that the, my rates are very linear and they work really well for their particular flying style and all I'm trying to do is make it feel natural. I want things to flip and roll at a very natural way to my hand so that when my timing goes, I'm, you know, I can catch it. I can do slow things because I can move the stick a certain way and it doesn't create this uncontrollable exponential jump in rotation speed. So all of these things can correlate with a better flying experience and just overall more control, okay? So being able to tune your rates, huge thing. Now that you know how to do that, go out and fiddle with it. Play on the game, go outside if you're experienced or if you have a real quad uh, and you wanna go outside and test this stuff, you know, set it up at neutral or baseline or lower the rates, um, put them at 0.64 on super rate um, and then on RC rate, you know, adjust it pretty low to like 500 degrees per second go up and don't do a roll immediately like an inch off the ground because it's not gonna complete the roll, but you know, get a feel for it and start increasing it. Say, I want a little bit faster. Or it's a little too a little too sharp in the center. I wanna put some expo in there to dull it down. Um, and there's all these different variations of things that you can change, but if you go off the guidelines that I just showed you, then you can make the quad very much feel like the way that you want it to feel.
So um, I hope that was, uh, you know, informative. I hope you learned a lot, especially um, rate tuning can be a very complex thing. And I personally am still doing this today. Like I adjust rates occasionally depending on the aircraft. I have some aircraft with a certain ESC that I might adjust the rate just ever so slightly because it doesn't fly exactly the same as what I'm used to. Um, Cause I have like an overall rolls, like the way that I like the quad to feel, I adjust anything that I fly to feel that way. And I do that by adjusting the rates, not by putting a different prop on there or doing something like that. It's all done in the rate. So if you got like a baseline, you know, you, you know how it's supposed to do, uh, supposed to react and you know what timing is what, then you can adjust the rate accordingly now that you know how to do that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a lot about rates and, uh, you know, put it in the comments if you learned anything about, um, just the fundamentals. And if you have any questions or you have any video recommendations that you want me to do, obviously PIDs is going to be one of them. I can already tell. Um, then yeah, we'll talk about that. So thank you guys. And I'll see you in the next video.